What is your name? My name is Don Clark. I'm the president and CEO of Grand Design RV. First question, who inspired you to pursue the career you have today? Interesting question, maybe not so interesting answer. The gentleman's name was Mr. Menges. And Mr. Menges was a father of a friend of mine. Uh, and he would always, I was working my way through college and I was working at this small audio store, high-end audio store. And he kept, every time he'd see me, you're wasting years with this career. You should be with a bigger company and more people and you know, people that can, can, can teach you, you know, a business. And I would tell Mr. Menges, look, it's not a career, it's a job. It's paying for my college. And, and finally, I didn't want to go over to my friend's house anymore because he kept, you know, teasing me almost about my, my job. And finally he said, look, um, Amy told me you're getting kind of uh, done with my questions about your career and I'll make you a bet. It was Notre Dame playing maybe USC, and, and I never bet against Notre Dame, but his, his proposal was, look, you, um, you lose the bet, you have to interview with a, um, a company of my choice. If you win the bet, I'll never mention it again. And then I said, okay, deal. Well, it was Coachman RV back in the day, um, back in the 80s, and and I lost, the, I bet against Notre Dame. I shouldn't have. That was the one game they won. And, and I interviewed for six and a half hours, and, and it was drudgery. It was just going from one department to the next. They offered me a job. I turned it down. But I went back to, uh, to the, the audio store, and the owner found out that uh, I had interviewed, and he was mad at me. So I wound up leaving that and uh, taking a position at Coachman, and I think it was in the bill and materials department, and and that was my start uh, to a career, 40, almost 40 years now, career in the RV industry. What is one item on your bucket list? Because I mentioned I've been in, in the RV industry for about 40 years or so, and we're just shy of that. I want to grab an RV and spend a couple of months uh, touring and discovering North America and going to the sites that, that um, you know, I've either flown over but not visited and just kind of learn what we have here. And I think it would be cool to do it at Canon RV, one of my items. Where are you in birth order and do you think it affects your personality? Yes, it does. I'm number eight of a family of nine and um, being one of the youngest, um, uh, kids in the family, uh, it makes you pretty competitive in, in most things you do growing up with older siblings. Um, so probably my competitive nature, also uh, communication skills, you got to develop those soon when you have that many siblings or you're never heard. And then I eat fast. And, and the reason I eat fast is because the older kids would take my food if I didn't. So um, probably those two traits, you know, being competitive, learning how to communicate with different personalities, and yes, eating fast. If you had to pick one age to be permanently, which age would you choose? That's a great question. Um, I think 50 was a good year. And the reason I don't say 20 or younger, though those were fun years, um, but 50, you learn who you are, you, you, you know more things about the world. And, and so I, 50 would have been a, a pretty good number. Now, I want to have my life as it is now, and I would want to have my kids and, and, and family um, intact. But uh, 50, I think that's a good, good year. If you could have dinner with one person, living or dead, real or fictional, who would you choose? You know, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be my dad. Um, my dad uh, passed away when I was 19. And when you're 19, when I was 19, I knew everything. You know, I was, you know, it was like my dad would, would, would teach me life lessons. But when you're 19, do you really listen or appreciate uh, some of the things your, your parents tell you? And I can tell you in my case, 
you know, I, I should have been more attentive and, and listened a little bit more. So it would be cool years later now that I'm older to um, be able to sit down and have, have dinner with my dad and, and tell him, hey, I get it now. I get all those life lessons or most of the life lessons you taught me. There's not a week that goes by where something pops up and then I, 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 I understand that, hey, dad tried to teach me that and you know, I just didn't listen. So it'd be a good opportunity to thank him, you know, for the life lessons that we had in that relatively short period of time. What is the best advice you were ever given and who was it from? Oh, it'd be from my mom, Mary Clark. Um, my dad was born in 1900, so he was older when, when I was born. He was 60 years old when I was born, 64 when my little brother was born. My mom was, I think, 18 years younger. and. My mom would be the go-to person whenever, you know, I was I was uptight or had problems or if the weight of the world is on your shoulders when you grow up. And and she used to tell me two things that, you know, I, I still draw on today and she's passed as well. But uh, the two things that she would say is when you're super stressed, super worried, you know, Donnie, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And, you know, it always did. You know, it didn't seem like it at the moment, but um, look, in time, this will seem less and, and those issues will, will not be there. The other thing she said is, do the right thing, you'll be okay. And I know it sounds so basic, but man, that, that never goes out of style, right? Do the right thing, you'll be okay. And in both cases, really great pieces uh, of advice and the same advice I passed down to my kids. Last question, what is your favorite thing about Grand Design? Yeah, you know, we built great products at Grand Design. We, we, um, we've become very meaningful to the industry, and I think a, 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 a intricate fabric of our community as well. Um, and even though our products are cool, uh, our production facilities are 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 great, up up updated and new and state of the art. Um, that still pales when um, when when it's compared to the people. You know, we have an incredible culture at Grand Design and. And the culture is not me. It's it. The culture is is our people. Our team members are second to none, and and they have helped create a culture that really is unique in our industry. And so easy to answer would be our people. Hey, thanks for tuning in and learning more about our Grand Design people.